Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, JK Amazie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today, we're going to be talking about how to end your relapse before it begins. Now, yesterday in the morning, one of my private one-on-one clients relapsed after 15 months free of porn and masturbation. And to be quite honest with you, I wasn't surprised. Like most of my clients, he's a successful high performer. He's driven, he's self-made, he has a high six-figure income, very disciplined. And in his life, he's overcome many personal challenges. He also followed my system strictly for a year, hence his staying off porn and masturbation for up to 15 months. However, one thing I would like to note is that in my experience, affluent, high-performing men sometimes find it quite challenging to let go of certain things from their past in their life, which may actually lead to a relapse. My point is, despite everything, this brother still relapsed. Now, if you're interested in the reason why affluent or wealthy, high-performing men find it difficult to let go of a few things in their life, you may want to go back to one of my first 15 podcast episodes where I talk about that. Just search for it. It's a very good one. And it's going to be quite relatable to those of you who are up there, basically, those of you who fall into that category. Anyway, I spoke to him last night and I thought those of you who listen to the podcast might benefit from what I shared with him. It's something quite simple. It's just one part of our discussion that evening, but I'm going to share the worksheet that I put together for him, which he's going to be using moving forward to identify possible signs of relapse. And brothers, the reason why he relapsed is because he still held on to some aspects of his old life, as I mentioned earlier. Basically, you will continue relapsing if you do not identify the people, the places, and the things which lead to a relapse. Unfortunately, it's quite challenging to identify every single part of your life which needs to change. And this worksheet is going to help you identify all the major situations which could lead to a relapse. So I actually highly recommend that you take some notes. So if you're driving or if you're in the gym or if you're active while listening to this, uh, feel free to pause it here and continue a little bit later. Or if you're able to take notes, just kind of pull out your phone and uh, open up the notes app and take some notes. There's a lot more work to be done after filling out the worksheet. I just wanted to share something that would help some of you who may be relapsing or who feel that a relapse is imminent. So the first question in the worksheet is, who are the people around you who are most likely to trigger you? The second is, who are the people that trigger you who you find it difficult to create boundaries with? I'll give you an example of this. Sometimes there are men who are triggered by their parents, right? Just being around your parents or having your parents calling you during a tough time is not helpful because their advice or the way they treat you as if you're still a child might be a trigger. The same goes for relationships that you're in. Maybe your wife says or does certain things which trigger you. And right now you're in a situation where that's happening. So the first thing you want to do is acknowledge it. You actually want to write it down and say, who are the people around me who are most likely to trigger me? The third question is, who in your life is associated with your porn and masturbation addiction? What I mean by this is, is there somebody in your life, a physical person, who basically has something to do with your behavior? An example could be maybe your ex-wife or your ex-girlfriend, who you find yourself often fantasizing about when you masturbate. Maybe there's a coworker who you find very attractive, and every time you see them, you end up in fantasy land and you end up masturbating about them. If there is somebody in your life who's associated with that or you're acting out behavior, write them down. The fourth is, what are five internal feelings, emotions, which place you at risk for masturbating and viewing pornography? And I actually want you to write all of this down. What I mean by that is, what are the emotions that you experience or you've been experiencing recently that could cause you to slip? So for instance, it could be anger. Maybe you're experiencing a lot of anger. Think about it. And you know that if you have a blow up in the next two to three days, you're definitely going to slip. Perhaps you 
slip and masturbate when you feel depressed. And right now at work or in your social life, you are dealing with quite a few challenges and you don't think you're getting the better of these challenges. Basically, these challenges are whooping your ass. And you know that it's only a matter of time before you crumble over it. Well, it's very helpful to acknowledge it. Many men don't do this. They don't anticipate being whooped by something. We're just in the moment getting our butts kicked. But we also need to write down and find out like, hey, what's the worst case scenario in terms of my emotions, right? The next is what are five external situations and things like relationships or social situations or events which might place you at a risk for relapse. For instance, is there a bachelor party which might be coming up? Is there a birthday party? Is there an event where there might be alcohol? Are you going on a vacation? What is happening? What's an event that's coming up that puts you at risk for relapse? Next is how do you spend your time when you're experiencing strong emotions or when you have the urge to watch pornography? And what I mean by that is when you start experiencing strong urges, what do you do, right? Do you choose to ignore it by focusing on maybe watching TV or watching movies or playing video games or going to the gym? What are you actually doing? And ask yourself, Am I engaging in behavior which is going to actually promote a, <laughs> promote a relapse? Because when you experience strong urges and you choose to spend that time distracting yourself by being on social media, chances are you're going to slip. However, if you start experiencing strong emotions and you instead choose to spend your time around people, you decide that you're going to be social, you decide you're going to engage in an activity that helps with your self-care, then that's going to help you. But the point of this exercise, brothers, is just to start taking an honest look at what is happening in your life right now. Because we rarely take the time to become present and find out the different things that are happening in our life, which may lead to a relapse. The next is, how has your behavior changed in the last few days or the last few weeks and the last few months? What that means is perhaps you've stopped engaging in a healthy morning routine. Perhaps you have started edging again. Perhaps you've relaxed your boundaries that you had with social media and television and you've started watching X-rated or R-rated movies again you started following fitness influencers on Instagram, whatever it is, identify it. The next question in the worksheet is, name five differences in thoughts and attitudes that you've experienced in the last few days, weeks, and months. Now, this is very important. The first, the question before this was about your behavior, but the next is we are identifying changes in your thoughts and attitudes. Perhaps, you have become a little bit overconfident in your control over your behavior. Maybe you've only been off pornography for a month and a half, but maybe you feel that it's lasted longer, right? Maybe there's something, uh, you have this thought where you feel that, man, not only did I stay off porn, but now I've been very consistent in my working out, in my diet, in my social life. And while it's only a month and a half, this gives you the false impression that you're actually making more progress than you did the last time you stayed off porn and masturbation. So that's an example of a thought and an attitude which may have changed positively, but on the other hand, it's caused you to lower your guard with your behavior and with your boundaries. And finally, I want you to write down to name five possible consequences if you were to relapse today. Right? So if you relapse today, what would the consequences be? I would experience brain fog, all the amazing emotions and that sense of hope which I experienced over the past few weeks would evaporate. My relationship with my partner would start falling apart. She would notice that I was irritable. I won't be able to get an erection anymore. My PIED is going to return. I'm going to feel like a fraud. I'm going to lose my self-confidence. My self-esteem is going to drop. Whatever those consequences are, 
write them down. I'm going to start lying to my accountability partner. I won't have what it takes to be honest anymore. I'm going to feel like a liar. There's so many consequences. You guys know what they are. Basically, brothers, you can't escape it. There will be times when you have very strong urges to view pornography, especially during your first year in recovery. And accountability is powerful. I highly recommend that you share what you're going through with an accountability partner. And the best thing about sharing is that the moment you begin to express what is going through your thoughts and emotions, your urges actually disappear. You no longer feel that they are insurmountable and you no longer feel alone in the struggle. So please take a few moments to fill out the worksheet, write it out, what I've just talked about. There are about nine to 10 questions there and share it with an accountability partner. Now, I know most of you may not have an accountability partner. I also know that there's some of you who listen to this who feel that an accountability partner is unnecessary and you're a badass and that your willpower is going to pull you through. I just wanna make it very clear to you that I, JK, I have an accountability partner. In fact, I have multiple accountability partners for every area of my life. The only area of my life where I don't have an accountability partner is for going to the gym and working out because I'm a freak when it comes to that. I have issues there. So I'll just go to the gym every time. But when it comes to things like meditation, when it comes to my other businesses, when it comes to my consistency and certain things that I do, when it comes to my diet, I have accountability in all these areas of my life, right? So that is so important. So brothers, I do ask that you excuse me if this podcast seem to be a little bit all over the place, especially in the beginning. I just really wanted to share that worksheet with you guys. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. Now, I, I do want to let you guys know that recently we had three students graduate from the Reboot Intensive last week. So for the first time in a while, we have three spots available in the Reboot Intensive, and there's actually not that long of a wait list. So if you're over the age of 25, if you're a high performance professional, if you're in a relationship and you would like to work with me personally to end your behavior with porn and masturbation, please visit the link in the description of the podcast to speak to me personally or send an email to elevatedrecovery at gmail.com. And in the subject line, put the word private. And that lets me know that you're somebody who listened to the podcast and you would like to speak to me directly. You don't want to speak to my assistant. You don't want to speak to any of my reboot strategists. You're like, I want to speak to JK directly. All right. And I'll send you a link. You'll be redirected to my private calendar. I'm only going to be available for these calls twice this month, and that's the month of March. So I look forward to speaking with you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll speak to you tomorrow.